All right. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the August 2023 Greater Philadelphia Mac and Men's uh, Extravaganza, what we'll let's call it. Uh, we have our quick meetup. Um, first, we'll just cover the agenda really quick, as we usually do. We'll talk about Mac OS 13 updates. There's a real lot. Mac OS 12. Some items of interest. Actually, I think we're missing something there. I think we're missing Sonoma, but that's okay. Um, conferences updates. Uh, and today we actually have two speakers. Uh, Adam Derrick from Jamf will be talking. I don't. See, is he on right now? I don't see him. So we might get to Adam afterward. Um, and Trevor. Uh, Trevor, how do you pronounce your last name? Sysok. Sysok. Yep. Trevor Sysok. All right. We'll be talking about baseline today with us. So uh, thanks for joining us. And um, let's move ahead. And what's new? So like I mentioned, there were a lot of updates uh, since our last meetup. Uh, 13.4.1 A and C were released, as well as 13.5 and 13.5.1. Um, as per usual, bug and security fixes. 13.5.1 uh, has no recorded CVEs. It is only a bug fix for uh, location services issues. So that, at least that's what it claims to be. Um, and I believe a 13.41a had some issues and it was pulled and then 13.41c was released after that. It was a little bit of a confusing time. So, um, yeah, it was a lot of updates for, for uh, Ventura coming around this time. Uh, links to the release notes and the enterprise release notes in the slide deck. 12.6.8 was released. Uh, same thing, bug and security up. up updates no added features this is typical we, we're, we're out of the feature time for most of these updates um so again release notes and enterprise release notes i don't think there was anything of note in 1268 that was added or that was closed uh, in terms of vulnerabilities so remember we are recording we and there are ndas so and sonoma is still in beta so we're not going to talk about it uh but we will oh, that just jumped ahead didn't it Friendly reminder to make sure you test and file feedback. Uh, today, uh, beta 6 was released with some nice fixes and nice updates. Uh, take a look at the release notes in your Apple seed if you um, have not already. Uh, and again, file feedback and test, test, test. We want to make sure that it's a good release. All right. Some more items of interest. Um, so... Night Owl, which is a control application, was sold to a botnet operator recently. Um, Apple, I believe, rem revoked their certificate, so it will not install or run anymore. But um, there's some more information there in that link. Um, I don't know, if Mike, if you wanted to share any information about that. I think you added this one. I feel like the Ben do that? Uh, whoever added it can share some information if there is anything, but if not... I got nothing. That sounds pretty bad, though. It does. Yeah, sound that bad. was that was me. Um, yeah, basically, just uh, the, it's an older application that was used to automate uh, light and dark mode on Mac OS prior to that being built into the OS. Uh, it had some other things, some uh, uh, similar to um, uh, the. Uh, uh, I'm blanking on the uh, the application name and the feature in Mac OS, but uh, the thing that changed the color temperature of the screen depending on time oh, of day. Flux, yeah. Yep. And so it, it, yeah, it did both of those, but uh, it had been obsoleted for quite some time uh, by the time this uh, botnet operator uh, uh, glad came it was into play. Glad it was Sherlock then. <laughs> yep. And then uh, iTerm had some uh, vulnerabilities discovered. Now, I, I believe, it's, so CV is the forthcoming, but I believe some of these vulnerabilities actually have been in the product for some time and they were just now, um, um, they're now getting remediated. Um, I know there's the link there and there was some talk about it in um, the Slack in the security channel. So if you have iTerm, you'll want to patch. Not a lot of items of interest this time. But we do have a lot of conference updates. So Mac DevOps YVR videos are being posted. PSU Mac admins, videos are online right now. Uh, we had a pretty good showing at PSU this year. Uh, I mean, we had a, uh, we'll had we have to share some photos of it, but we had a, 
really, really good Philadelphia showing, and we actually found a bunch of vendors there who uh, had, who brought or people f- that were at the sponsor tables uh, that were from the Philly area and hanging out with us a bit. So that was kind of fun. Jaynook coming up in a, in September, so got a month. I don't know how many people are here going, but um, if you are, uh, you know, in, enjoy the time. And Max, this event 2023 is coming up in October as well. There's one more in here. Yes. Projected by the C6.0 is uh, still planned in October. Um, if you're, um, it is in Spain this year, but if you are um, not aware uh, of the, the issues going on in Maui and you have a chance, uh, I believe, um, Patrick, because uh, Patrick, I believe, is from Maui or at least resides in, and he's been collecting some. Um, donations to to help out with the uh the fires that are going on there so um maybe we'll post some, uh, something in the chat for that if people are uh, interested in donating for that so and just like that we're 10 minutes in and uh not even 10 minutes in and we are up to our special guests uh let me see adam are you on right now it doesn't look like he is on right now he he wanted to talk about jane Huck. Yeah. So if he's not on right now, we will skip ahead right now and we'll go to our special, special guest, <laughs> Trevor Sizog. Uh Let me stop my share. Continue recording. And um, I will hand it off to Trevor. I don't know if you have anything you want to share, but feel free to do that. There you go. You read my mind. So I'll hand it off to you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I've got a keynote for us. So hi, everybody. And thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Trevor Sysok. I work for Second Sun Consulting in Los Angeles, and you might know me as Big Mac Admin on Slack. Uh, we're IT consultants specializing in mixed Mac and Windows environments, and we've been supporting small businesses in LA for 20 years, and we're proud sponsors of the Mac Admins Foundation. Um, I'm here to talk about an open source project we've created called Baseline. Uh, Baseline is an MDM agnostic workstation setup tool for Mac OS. Uh, it is a Z shell script that processes packages, scripts, or installer labels in a defined order. Um, it can be run as a script directly from your management tool, but it's more commonly going to be initiated as a package install. Uh, we provide a signed and notarized package, but you'll see later in the presentation, you may find it beneficial to create your own package as well. Uh, there's very detailed documentation about how this works and all of the options that are available up on GitHub. Uh, Swift Dialog is the only dependency for Baseline. Everything else uh, is built usually, utilizing base feature set of Mac OS. Uh, so Swift Dialog is used to create the end user experience and let the user know what's going on while their workstation is getting set up. Uh, Baseline is also tightly integrated with Installimator, uh, which is an optional component. So the why did we make this tool? Um, we were looking to implement a single process that our team members could follow regardless of the environment details of any individual client. We wanted to be able to use one stable tool for any of our customers, and we didn't want to be tethered to any single management platform. We wanted more control over the order of operations and the installation methods than some MDM providers could give us. Uh, we wanted something easy to configure and easy to modify. Uh, not everyone on our team is a scripting wizard, but they should be able to modify a profile or put one together from scratch. And last, we wanted one tool that could scale regardless of the size of our client environment. So we're essentially an outsource IT department for small and medium businesses. Some of our clients have as few as five users and some have over a hundred. So baseline allows us to use this one unified tool for any of those environments. Um, so before I talk about what Swift Dialog and what Installimator are, um, I'm gonna just play a short video showing you what the end user experience is like uh, for baseline. 
So typically uh, what you're about to see would come immediately after device enrollment, just as the user gets to their desktop for the first time. Um, it could also be initiated via self-service or any other way you run a script or install a package. And this will only run uh, once a user is actively logged into the computer. Um, so to talk about what Swift Dialog is briefly, um, Swift Dialog is an open source tool written and maintained by Bart Reardon. He's very active on the Mac admin Slack. And if you're not familiar with this tool, you should definitely go check it out on GitHub. Um, Swift Dialog can be used to display dialog windows or notifications and give information to your users. Uh, your users can also be prompted to input text or choose items from a drop-down list or much, much more. Um, you can use user responses to those prompts to feed logic into your management scripts. So the primary baseline window that you saw is using the Swift Dialog list view. Um, to let your users know what's happening while things are getting installed or processed. Um, this list view is dynamically updated as items complete and lets the user know what's happening. And if any of these steps have a problem, there will be a red X instead of these green check marks that you see if an item fails. Uh, if you've not heard of Installimator, um, briefly, uh, Installimator is a Mac OS application installer super tool. Um, it's another Z shell script. Uh, it downloads the latest version of common applications directly from the official sources. Uh, Installimator uses built-in Mac OS security features to validate the authenticity of applications before it installs them. And it's brought to us by these fine people whose names I'm not going to butcher. And they are all very active community members on the Mac admin Slack. Um, the required recipes for Installimator are called labels. And those are contributed by basically dozens of Mac ad admins. Um, it's a real community project. And in our experience, it's pretty reliable and awesome all around. So baseline takes its instructions on what to process and how to look from a configuration file. Uh, the configuration file can be in the form of a profile MDM profile or a P list. You can use iMazing profile editor to make this configuration file. Um, and Jamf users can make use of a custom JSON schema to build a profile as well. So you can use the provided baseline package, or you can create your own. Uh, the provided package is signed and notarized by Second Son's developer ID, so it can be used during automated enrollment. Um, building your own package gives you more opportunities to customize baseline for your environment. Um, but in many cases, you may not even need to do that. This tool is made to be customizable out of the box. Uh, because Baseline takes its instructions from a configuration file, one package, one Baseline package can be used for many deployment scenarios. So for example, Second Sun has one custom Baseline package, which we use across many different organizations, and we manage configuration files per organization or per department as needed. The configuration profiles are made up of the following stuff. Um, first are scripts, packages, and installimator labels. These are like the meat of your configuration. These are the elements that tell baseline what to actually do and in what order to do them. Another thing in the configuration file are the Swift dialog options. So these can be set to customize all aspects of the branding and the messaging to fit your organization. Um, and then 
there's also additional options to manage just how baseline works, um, like whether or not you want to force a restart once it's complete, whether or not you want it to delete its installation directory after it runs and some other features as well. So making a profile is pretty simple. Like I mentioned that you can use iMazing Profile Editor. Um, you just have to define what it is you want baseline to do. So uh, in that configuration, if you're defining a package that you want processed, you're gonna define a display name, which is what the user sees in the list view. Um, and you're gonna give a path to where that package is located. Package can be defined with a URL if it's remotely hosted or a local file path if it's available on the disk or on a network share. Um, optionally, you can also include any arguments you might need to pass to the package at the command line. And you can define a team ID to validate that the package is signed by the expected developer um, or you and or you can de um, define an MD5 checksum for that package as well. So if the team ID or the MD5 checksum defined in the configuration file don't match the package once it's on disk, baseline is going to skip the installation of that and report it as a failure to the logs and to the end user. Uh, defining scripts is very similar. Um, you give a display name that you want the user to see while it's running, and you give a path to where that script's hosted. The script can be a URL or it can be a local file path on disk. Um, using the scripts feature, you can also specify the path to a binary for your management tool. So for instance, the path to the Jamf or the Adagy binary can be defined as the script path. And then you use script arguments to indicate uh, which policy item you want your management binary to execute. Um, so in addition to script arguments, you can also define an MD5 checksum of the script to make sure you're running uh, what you think you're running. So a uh, quick example of how I write my scripts for the best usability with baseline is to have those scripts accept command line arguments in order to create flexibility. So for instance, the installer script for our asset management system takes the group assignment as a command line argument. This allows me to make the same deployment script to use the same deployment script for multiple organizations or multiple departments. And then I manage which group the devices are assigned to through that baseline configuration file. Uh, last would be the installimator labels. Um, same idea here, you define a display name and you define the label that you want Installimator to process, uh, like Google Chrome or Microsoft Office. Um, and then additionally, you can define any Installimator arguments that you may need. There's a lot of features in Installimator, so you can basically make use of all of those along with baseline by just providing them in the configuration file. Um, baseline processes items in a very particular order, uh, and this order was designed to give admins as much flexibility as possible when deciding what baseline should do. So initial scripts run first, and while these initial scripts are being processed, there's no Swift dialog window from baseline. So these run prior to that list view window that you all saw earlier. Um, Admins can use initial scripts to provide a welcome message to download assets like configuration files for packages um, or to, to allow your users to choose options like what department they belong to. So initial scripts can also modify the baseline configuration file itself, uh, which unlocks a lot of flexibility. So we achieve a zero touch workflow with baseline by utilizing the install enterprise app feature of automated deployment to actually deploy the baseline package. Um, enrollment happens into MDM. During that process, the package gets installed along with the configuration profile for baseline. And the package delivers the script, any bundled assets, and it delivers a launch daemon as well. So when using the package method, 
the baseline script is actually initiated through a launch daemon. Um, so this frees up whatever agent or process installed the baseline to continue doing other jobs. Uh, so once that all occurs, once the daemon initiates the script, baseline verifies there's a configuration file and then automatically installs Swift Dialog and Installimator. Installimator is only deployed if the configuration file calls for it. Um, baseline waits for an end user login session to be established before it starts processing any items. Um, it does this by waiting for the dock and the finder processes to be running before it proceeds. Um, and then when the user is logged in, uh, initial scripts are processed right then. So after the initial scripts, the primary list view window is created that displays all of the items that baseline is going to work through. Um, it processes installimator labels, packages, and then scripts one more time. So um, after that, there's a closing message for the user, letting them know, hey, that everything was good, you're going to restart, or letting them know these items may have failed, here's how to contact IT, or direct them to self-service, whatever you need to do. So allowing admins to create those initial scripts and then run scripts again at the end um, really gives a high level of flexibility for this to work for your needs. You may need an initial script to set up assets prior to installing a package, or you may need a script to configure application settings after a package has been run. So with being able to define those in two places, you can you can use either of those. So there are three default Swift dialogue windows associated with baseline. The first is this primary list view that shows all the items being processed. Uh, there is the success dialog, which will show the items, um, which will show when nothing exited with any errors. Uh, and then the failure screen will show if one or more items failed um, in your configuration file. So um, Swift dialogue arguments to manage the branding and messaging of each of these three windows can be fully customized in the configuration file. Uh, Swift dialogue supports SF symbols, which means you can choose from hundreds of native Mac OS icons and colors in addition to using your organization's branding and logos uh, to build these windows. There are a handful of additional options that have been added to baseline, mostly upon community requests. And there are also some additional improvements coming soon, which have been provided directly by other admins contributing code to the project. Um, my goal with baseline is to make it basically work for any environment, regardless of what management tools you have at your disposal. So if you're trying to use baseline, but there's some fundamental problem using it with your existing tool set uh, or your MDM, let me know, reach out, and we might be able to come up with ideas or add, uh, make changes to the project to, to make it work for everybody. That's my presentation. Um, I just want to give a big thanks to the Mac admin Slack community. I benefited greatly from the help of people there while I was writing this, and I never would have been able to achieve this without their help. Um, a big thank you to my employer for supporting me in my desire to make this an open source tool for the community. We use a lot of community tools like Nudge and Swift Dialog, Erase Install um, in our work. So giving back just feels good and feels like the right thing to do. And uh, we do have one other open source project on GitHub called Renew. Um, it's another Swift Dialog script. That project is used um, to prompt your users to restart their workstation every once in a while. And it's fully customized using a configuration profile, much like baseline is. Um, and we also have a handful of Swift dialogue example scripts and stuff on our GitHub. Um, I can make these slides available to you guys too, if, um, if that's desired. And I've got links to all these projects, everything we talked about here, so. Um, 
I'm happy to stick around and talk or answer questions or anything if you guys have them. That was great. Anybody has, thank you. Yeah, Chris. thank you so much. If anybody has any questions, great time for that. I actually have a question. Um, so you wanted to make it platform agnostic, obviously, because you wanted to make sure that, or MDM agnostic, because I, I assume you wanted to make sure that it works on all of your clients, right? So it doesn't matter what they have into and blah, 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 blah. Um, are there any that you found that it doesn't work on or that you have struggled with getting it to work on? I know it's probably just, it's a it's mainly a, a Z shell, but um, yeah. I know some can be finicky. The The main consideration, I think, is just the deployment method. If your MDM allows you to install a package on demand or on a trigger that makes sense for this kind of workflow, then you're going to be pretty good, right? Um, I added one feature because there was an there was an Intune admin who was telling me he couldn't get it to stop running. Like basically the the <laughs> script would run uh, unexpectedly, right? And so we I I was able to add a feature to basically look for a completion file um, for him. So now if the script runs again, it'll find that completion file and just exit. So it, it won't matter. Um, but uh, I, there are people using. I mean, FileWave and Adigy and um, Workspace One, Intune and everything like that. Um, I forgot to mention there is a baseline channel on the Mac admin Slack, which is where, you know, the hive mind exists. Um, mm -hmm. And I know uh, there's there's some folks who've been giving me, I'm actually behind. Uh, I have folks that have been giving me um, info for the wiki for advice on using this with different MDM platforms. So. I'm a little behind on uh, actually translating those from the info they gave me onto the wiki page, but um, I'm definitely going to be catching up on that. And so hopefully, regardless of what tool you use, you'll be able to go get a couple tips at least on how to deploy it. Yeah, this is great because um, I have people, I, we use, uh, in, in our org, we use Set Up Your Mac, right, from Dan Snelson, which very yep. similar vein to this, but it is very much a Jamf-focused tool. So, and I've had people say, like, oh, I wish they would make something for, that's not Jamf. It's like, well, they did, you know. My, so, uh... <laughs> my first stop when I kind of went in this direction was to go look at Dan Snelson's script and figure out how difficult it would be to unjamf it. <laughs> and it, it is it is way too integrated with the Jamf ecosystem yep. to really do that. So um, yeah, I think I only stole like one or two lines of code from him. But um, it's not stealing; it's borrowing. Yeah, Re yeah repurposing, sure. repurposing, collaborating. I, like, I like pillaging personally. Pillaging. But... Yeah, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> Anybody else have questions? Uh, Mike, that's you wrote something. Yeah, thank you. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I was just going to in the right. chat. Um, I was curious if has anybody used um baseline with monkey or it like instead of installamator? So, Mike, I was thinking the same thing when I when I started using it, and I thought, wow, it'd be cool if I could just run this with monkey, and yeah, you can, and um, but the, getting the individual installs wasn't going to work. So what I ended up doing was, and and on, honestly, I didn't really think about Installamator too much. I, 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 I've seen it before and I thought, I don't need that. I have Monkey. Um, but this use case kind of makes a lot of sense to me now as far as um, running Installamator uh, labels at enrollment and then never using it again, basically, and relying on Monkey for the rest. Uh, kind of works really well for my my use case and what i'm doing is i have you know several installamator labels uh to get the latest versions of everything on a brand new machine and then it and then it just runs a uh, actually i have it broken up into two the monkey check and then a monkey install at the end just to clean up and get anything else kind of gives it a nice breakdown instead of just running the whole monkey uh, run at you know at, at you know from the beginning, which is going to take forever for all the all the things to run through. This this breaks it out nicely in the individual installs, especially like 
the uh, Microsoft apps, um, everything else that is in there. You can give little uh, descriptions of each thing. So I kind of like the Installimator um, integration alongside of Monkey. Yeah, we know that would be an option for me only because we have uh, some stuff going through. We use um, Gusto's Auto Promote. So the very latest might not necessarily what we want to be on the fleet for some time after the computer gets set up. So uh, I would probably trigger a, like a managed software update auto run in the background and then uh, they get what they should. Um, I was just kind of curious how much of this I'd, I'd like, can I, can I use this or do I have to sort of cherry pick the code and, and see, I see what I can do about replacing the installimator support with monkey, just reading the monkey log, I guess. I'm happy to chat in more detail directly with you to see if, you know, uh, see if you can kind of bend it to your will. Um, there there are definitely opportunities like if you you could you could initiate that monkey you could initiate your monkey job during the initial scripts portion and background it and have the rest of the stuff run and then have a script at the end that's waiting and making sure that monkey run completes before it gives that final success screen um and i might have some other ideas we're not a monkey shop natively so it it, I've had some people message me, but no one, uh, no one interested far enough to to figure out like what an actual integration would look like, right? I'm I'm definitely not against it. I think that would make this a much a much better tool for a lot of folks because I know a lot of you are using Monkey, right? Um, we do use uh, like some other folks are saying in the chat. Our strategy is Installimator for initial deployment. We have our MDM based tools and a little bit of Installimator for managing updates after that initial deployment, right? So mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, don't know if anybody rem remembers, um, I don't remember the name of it anymore, but there uh, there was a script somebody had written uh, as a kind of a supplement to Monkey that would just run one package. I don't, I wanna say like, monkey run or something really generic like that and it was probably nate walk um uh but you know that might be something to look at too rather than like having a full run that has you know all the different dependencies that can break out into a into a monkey run um but I, I just don't remember the name of that tool so there are other swift dialogue scripts similar to well similar to that list view of baseline, which instead of having your master script actually processing those items, the Swift dialogue script just waits and looks for those files to be delivered on disk. And then when they're there, they give you the checkbox like, yes, this is complete, right? Um, I actually started doing this in that direction. Um, let the MDM deliver all the apps, have my baseline thing just looking for those apps and saying yes when you're done. Um, I found that a couple MDMs are um, flaky enough that like I'm just I'm sitting here waiting for half an hour for Google Chrome to install and it just never installs. And then how do you do timeouts in a shell script and stuff like that? It got, it got way too complicated, right? And so that's why I moved more to the installimator method and doing things in a defined order. That said, um, adding, you know, wait items as a category for baseline, like process these things and then wait for these items would not take that much more development time. And so if that's something you think that would help you integrate it with monkey, right? Like we start on monkey, initiate the monkey job during those initial scripts and then have those files we're waiting for. And those are the line items. Um, that's definitely something that could be added in. Hadn't really been asked for it yet, so I don't, I don't know. It's the beauty of open source code is uh, if you know what you're looking at, you can, you know, you can just go into the code and you're like, oh, I can add a monkey thing into here. I mean, you know, you just take the process installimator labels and rewrite it for process monkey or something like that. Yes. So 
I think my script is very well um, commented. It's not as gorgeous as Dan Snelson. That guy's laid out his bash script so amazingly well. I'm like, I, I can't do that. But um, it is laid out in a pretty logical manner. You should be able to follow what's going on. I I definitely comment everything um, for my own purposes, if not everybody else, anybody else reading it. So, yeah. Thank you. Another thought for Monkey is that you might just be able to put in the, like a local manifest file just for the initial deployment. Um, well, I mean, I guess I guess the, the two components I'm looking at is uh, we use install applications to actually run the code. And then currently we, we use DP Notify to read the log file and, and show the user what's happening. Um, I put it in the chat. Uh, John Crane uh, made he also used Swift Dialog to make really just a replacement for DP Notify, but I don't think it's actually. You would still need something like install applications to actually run the code and do the stuff in the background. So, uh, I guess I guess what I'm looking at is if we're gonna replace uh, install applications in the future. Uh, what would I do that with? It I I do like that baseline kind of does both. It's it's doing the heavy lifting in the background, but also showing the user what it's doing. Um, it'd be nice to have it all in one tool. Yeah, I mean, um... yeah, definitely something to tinker around with. I I gotta actually dedicate some time and start doing some uh some testing with this um i have a quick question trevor do you have any intention of adding uh, like any kind of input uh to the script and i was thinking well for one could be like um, a list of optional software that you could have run right after that first screen and then another one might be for like naming the computer or something like that, some kind of um, input for that. So the idea behind the public script is that I'm kind of giving you the opportunity to write those scripts yourself in using Swift dialog and run those as that in that initial script portion, right? Mm -hmm. um, so to give you an idea and, and like the the logic behind that is that you know you're asking for the input of something and it's like well the input of what right every organization is going to have kind of different needs and wants for what that what that really means um i'll tell you as it is if you learn how swift dialogue works you can slot that script right into baseline right now. You definitely, you need to know how Swift dialog works and you need to know how to um, programmatically create the baseline configuration profile, right? So as it is, if you made that, uh, you could make a Swift dialog script that prompts with maybe four software titles and check the box on which one you want. And when the user clicks okay, that script then, changes out the baseline configuration file um and then initiates that list view which could include and and process the items that you've included there i'm not sure if that made sense um or if that was a little rambly but so the platform's there for you to kind of slot those things in yourself right um I am overly active on the Slack, so if you nerd snipe me at the right time, I might <laughs> I might be able to uh, assist you with some of that stuff. My boss is here looking at me laughing as I say that. <laughs> um, I don't know if he knows how much uh, troubleshooting I end up doing for other people on this stuff, but... Um... <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, if, you, if you have an idea on like, um, I mean, I can I can kind of show you too, like what what we do for ours because we do something similar at least for um, naming the computer. Um, can you guys see this uh, VM I'm looking at right now? Um, yep. So yep. we have an yep. initial script 
that prompts the user and says, hey, this looks like this is what your first name is. Do you want to use that or do you want to use something else? Like we're going to name your computer and based off of that. And, um, and then we use, and that's part of our, it's this right here. So uh, is this the name of the end user? This is here both for like a zero touch, but also for if we're building machines in house, right? Sometimes sometimes uh, we're not making the end user account first. Um, so we would use this in, in that case, but I can say, no, I'm, I want to be somebody else, you know, call me Rambo. Um, and then this here is also part of the initial scripts. And now it goes into the, the full like baseline setup. Right. So rather than trying to come up with a prompt that that's going to be useful for everybody and maybe some people don't want it and figure out how to turn it on and off. It's kind of like write your script, deliver it to the computer and baseline will run it for you. And then you can, you can tie those together in that way. Um, and then if you notice right there too, just because I don't think I made it um super clear but you know it's also mdm you don't need an mdm to be able to run this either you can manually install a config profile or you can just use a plist and run the package manually so anybody else Uh, no, nothing there. Just thanks, Trevor, for your support on Slack and stuff as well. Um, I think everyone's really, everyone's really thankful for what you did. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, happy to be here. I I played I played around with it for maybe a couple of days, and I I I was already ready to go to the production, and it was like so easy, <laughs> so fun. Honestly, it made yeah. you know it's what that it's this kind of software, open source stuff that makes managing Max actually fun, uh, for me. So I appreciate that. Exactly, yeah. Especially even as an intro admin, like I find it so easy to use compared to running the M's in the past. And people give intro a lot of grief, but it is very easy to roll out. I've just sent you, Trevor, a, a little guide of how I do it on the Intune. I know that you, you start on your packages and stuff, but I call up, I call up on a shell like that user that you mentioned before. Um, so I sent you a little bit of a guide as well. Oh, that's what I do. And yeah. uh, you know it's great because hardly any uh, MDM has this solved yet. So <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Without paying for Someday. it, yeah. Uh, we, we no, you can't even pay for it. it. I pay for it. <laughs> uh, we pay for it too, and I found that it was unreliable enough that, that we decided to go this way. Write right your own, yeah. Right. Um, if your if your organization can tolerate like Installimator, which basically means the latest version install the latest version whatever it is if your organization works for that you really can't have baseline running for you in like a matter of minutes right um yeah so i use it for like my core like i was saying before like my generic packages i know we're always going to have the newest stuff so like office edge chrome company portal whatever like your your baseline as it were it's really good for just to get those newest packages down to use machines it saves me a lot of time to so I can at the same time it's talking to me shut up uh so, yeah it's good for like those base core packages if you don't have any sort of specific line of business requirements to get your core down to your map you can have it set up in minutes honestly but uh trevor you actually pointed me to the fact that you don't need to use installimator you could just host your own packages and just yeah point the uh, configuration profile to, to those packages you can pass URLs as well. Like, for example, um, I'm a Zscaler user. Right. Um, Zscaler do not have an installer meta label because they version their URLs. So I just pass the Zscaler URL in Spaceline and it works that way as well. Or you can have it point towards a file share. Or I have some stuff coming from my Zorb blog, for example. Like, it's so easy to do whatever you want to do with. So, so I've not used Spaceline, Trevor, and um, I, I haven't read through all the docs yet, but. Um mentioning that uh you can pass the url or you can use a file share can you pass it credentials oh like basic off um or or like a, a, a salted credential or something or 
was about to try to get that tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, I was going to make a private, <laughs> a private URL of sorts, but yeah. passing the credentials, I don't know. But I think I should be able to pass it a a credentialed URL, basically. That's what I'm going to actually try to I do. I mean, that. obviously, that's a security question, right? Because, you know, if you're hard coding like a, a basic auth in there, that's a that's a security vulnerability. But, you know, it's one of those just wondering if like, hey, if, if you know, if you have a share that's out there that requires either basic auth or something like that, I didn't know if there's, mm -hmm. if that's possible. There's not, but it would be very easy to add a curl options like argument <laughs> to the command file right. where you could yeah. then pass whatever curl options you want um, to that curl command. Again, it's like, it's not something I would necessarily do because right. if, it's, if it's an MDM profile, any user on the machine is going to be able to see that, <laughs> right? I mean, you could base 64 mm -hmm. code that's it true. or something, but that's like barely better than just plain text. So exactly. Yeah. Um, but I do think like having a curl options um, is a very interesting idea that I'm going to add to my notes right now because <laughs> it would <laughs> be pretty, thought, you know, pretty yeah, simple I mean... to implement. Yeah. Because if you could just tell it like, oh, or just pass it a command, like, it, it, you know, you can just tell it like, oh, here's the shell command I want it to run. And then here's the description of what it does. Right. Because that would then necessitate, that would allow you to do a little bit more in terms of like, just speaking for, as a Jamf admin, like you said, it, you know, you have a trigger, right? You could just say, you know, run this shell command, you know, Jamf, you know, policy event oh. name. Well. So you can run a shell command okay. right now yeah. using baseline, right? Like it, uh, nice. the the which was something discovered by uh, another user that they told <laughs> me. and I was like, oh yeah, that would work, wouldn't it? Like, uh, like you can enter the Jamf binary and then tell it, you know, uh, yes. this event's policy ID to run whatever. You can do that already. So you could run just individual commands that way. It might look weird on the configuration profile, but like who cares it'll still work uh, yeah what i was going to say about your your basic auth question and stuff is it's probably even better you could obfuscate that in a script and just have baseline mm -hmm. run that script right yeah um, so i do like the idea of the curl options um for sure um in terms of yeah in terms of like including that mm -hmm. authorization though it's like it's if hard, you at least right? had it yeah. in a script I mean, look, it's a security question for you, right? If if you can tolerate having that script on disk for the 10, 15, 20 minutes that it's going to be there, um, then go ahead and do that, right? Um, but if you can't, that's, you know, that's a whole other problem you've probably solved for other reasons, right? That's a question your CISO needs to answer, not, uh, not you. <laughs> do you do anything to check for the these... Uh curl options or other commands you might be able to insert for things like, you know, semicolons and things that might allow somebody to insert something malicious um, or you're just I mean, taking those options raw. We're taking those options raw in order to write to the baseline directory where your config mm -hmm. profile is, you would have to have admin access to the machine already. Um, so we're kind of assuming if you can mess with that profile, you're already, yeah. you've already got root, right? So it's, yep. it's going to be delivered by or the, you're on, or you're on the, or the, on the MDM. Yeah. So the, you know, it's a tool running as root to begin with. So, um, I'm sure you could maliciously craft something that would, uh, break stuff, yeah. um, or, you know, just accidentally craft stuff that, that could break things. Absolutely. Uh, but in, in terms of the security validation, it's like if you define something as a script, you can put in the expected MD5 um, mm -hmm. of that script. And if you define a package, you can put in the team ID that signed the package, right? So. Thanks. I feel, I feel like I did a last question. That was a bummer. Somebody yeah. else say something positive. Well, <laughs> it it yeah, it sounds like um I don't know if anybody else has any questions, any comments. We'll get to. Well, 
Trevor, thank you so much for joining us. This was a uh, very very awesome. Um, thanks for taking the time. Thanks for the the, the project in general. Um, if uh, and you mentioned already, but if people want to find you on the Slacks, where can they reach you again? It's Big Mac Admin. Yeah, I'm the Big Mac Admin. You'll see an orange like burger on my avatar. Can't miss me. Um, one of, also, one of the great Slack channel names. Yes, for sure, yes, Trevor. That's, really that's, I, that's what I really want to congratulate you on. Is mostly that. <laughs> I literally <laughs> made it like mindlessly without thinking because uh, somebody, I think Tom Bridge said something on the podcast and I was like, I'd never joined the Slack before. And I was like, I got to ask him about this. I was like, I need a name. I need a name. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Funny. Awesome. Well, yeah, it is. It is a perfect name for it. So, uh, but again, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. And uh, thanks. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. Yep. Um, so for Thanks those who are, oh, was somebody making a comment? No? Okay. For those who are uh, not aware, uh, we will be stopping our recording so we can um, uh, so we can have a little more um, personable conversation, um, you know, without uh, prying eyes. So, uh, so we'll all wave goodbye to the recording. Bye-bye. Bye recording. And then whoever's controlling recording, please stop recording because I don't know who records it. <laughs>